I'm so glad you came back to join us today. I have a special guest, and I'm very pleased to have her with me. Her name is Jessica Whitehead. She's a powerful, amazing woman. And we're going to talk about God and our relationship with him. And I'm Jackie Cecil with JackieStrategist.com. Now we're just going to ask some, I hope, prying questions that caused Jessica to um, uh, feel as vulnerable as, as I was just acting in front of her a few minutes ago. She and I were small talking, and I told her some things about my personal life that frankly weren't that great, and she took them beautifully and encouraged me. So now I'm all excited to get to spend more time with her. Okay, Jessica. Uh, the first thing I'd like to know is, can you tell me your very first memory of God or when you wanted God in your life? Oh, man. Um, so I, I keep thinking of a dream that I had, I can remember being, um, I can remember being little, uh, you know, around five years old mm. and um, having a dream. That's the farthest I can go back with God is, is, is this dream. And um, I, so the dream was I was at church as at our church and everybody was singing inside. It was a Sunday night service. And I walked out of the church, which I don't think I would have been allowed to do, you know, <laughs> at five years old. Yeah. Um, but I walked out into the parking lot and it was like those, you know, pebbly rocks in the, in the parking lot. It wasn't like paved. And I walked out there and I looked up and I, and I could still hear the people singing, you know, I turned around and I could see the church lit up, you know, inside and it kind of glowing from the windows um, there were no lights in the parking lot. And I looked up and saw all the stars and I heard a voice call my name. Aww. And that, that was just the dream. And so that's the earliest memory I have, uh, you know, that uh, pertains to God. But so in like waking life, I guess um, my first memory is um, when I was, when I was younger, this was several years later, I was at church in children's church and the pastor's wife was in our children's church that day. And she was, um, she was praying and crying and all of the kids were praying and crying. And it was like, she was, she was, she was having this encounter with the Holy spirit. And it was, you know, making her emotional and she was just obviously having this encounter and we could all see it and she was praying over I don't remember what she, if she preached or if she gave us a little lesson I just remember the moment of seeing her encounter with the Holy Spirit and it being so powerful that she cried and it was so powerful that it was that it was all over all of us and we were all crying as kids, you know, and usually you think of children's church and it's like yeah. fun, you know, <laughs> but the power of the Holy Spirit just fell that day. And I don't remember it ever doing that again um, in my children's church class growing up, but that uh, they didn't, I mean, they didn't stay. I think that pastor and his wife, you know, they moved on, they left. And so they weren't there after a time. And so she, you know, she was just never in there again. Um, and, and how but I just remember then? feeling that maybe 10. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. To have so, an encounter with God at 10 is just precious. I guess I don't remember the encounter. I just remember her encounter mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. we were all having this, this, you know, we were just feeling the power of the Holy spirit. And I later as, as a teenager had an encounter and it was, and I can remember that very, very much. And it, you know, changed my life and brought me back. But, um, but that, at that time, I, just I have, remember, I have to hear this brought me back. 
Oh, what happened as a teenager? Okay, so you know, I think it's kind of normal for for people to veer off, you know, oh, yeah. as teenagers, you know, they kind of get into the high school, you know, popularity contests and parties and um, whatever, you know, that comes with all of that. And I didn't yeah. get into that very deeply, but it did distract me enough to veer off, you know, and um, I just remember um, maybe when I was 17 or 18, I just started asking the questions of why do I believe this? Do I believe all of this because my parents believe it? Do I believe it because I've been told my whole life or do I believe it because I believe it? And I was at that point and I, um, I knew that there was this, um, I think it was called prayer storm and it was at uh, a church in my city that I was living in. And I went and there were, I'm a terrible estimator of number, like numbers of people. There was a ton. <laughs> there was a ton of people. There's a ton there. of people. Got it. The whole church, it was, a, it was kind of a mega church and it was full of people. It was full of young people like my age. And I remember being in there and just seeing people my age so hungry and just diving in full force after the Holy spirit and just wanting so much and seeing them worship and seeing them encounter, you know, the Holy spirit. Um, I just said, that's what I need. This is what I want. And I just dove in, you know, head first and, and took everything that God would give me. And it, but I, I think I recognized that power that was there mm -hmm. because I, I recognized it from when I was little and saw it in that children's church room. Ah. I recognized that it was the same power. And you, and you made a conscious decision. And I did. Excellent. And it, brought, and it brought me back. And then I just, I have been full force for whatever God wants, you know, since then. So. <laughs> <laughs> which includes I, you know making choices that you might want but those aren't going to serve god best you know <laughs> oh i've never done that <laughs> <laughs> i haven't always you know, i'm still human so i still make those choices <laughs> uh, i have to interject this little thing about you i came into a room everybody was whispering and telling me i was going to meet jessica you're going to get to meet Jessica today. You're going to get to meet Jessica today. And I'm like, okay, cool. And, you know, I had already loved Clay. Uh, you know, he, he and my son were close. I, I, I already loved Clay. And so I go in the room to meet Jessica. And there was this beautiful, sweet woman there with this, the cutest smile and this bubbly personality and the anointing so strong on her. I couldn't. I couldn't help myself. I, I almost, I mean, I was like, I want to hug her. I want to hold her. <laughs> it was so precious to see that anointing on oh, you. Wow. And the sweet thing is, every time I see you, it's there. Oh, it's awesome. Um, wow. I don't know. I don't know how God was kind enough to Clay to give him you. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you. glad he did. Oh, so glad God. he did. Ooh. Okay, um, I'm. I, I do want you to mention because uh, because this is a, a new video with you and I are doing. I'd like for you to tell a little bit about your children and the new adventure that's coming up in your life. Okay. Um, so Clay and I have five children. <clears throat> Our oldest is. Uh, do you want me to name them? You can do whatever makes you feel good. Uh, Jaken is 17 at mm -hmm. this moment and <laughs> Abigail is uh, 15. They are, they are the very best of friends. They are very close. And then um, Judah is about four years younger. Someone's going to do this math and be like, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> Judah is 11. That's four years. Um, <laughs> Lillian is nine. She's our powerhouse. And Faith is seven. And uh, we are 
currently living in Texas. Um, the kids grew up in Roswell, New Mexico, and that's where uh, Clay and I moved after we got married because we felt like that's where God w- wanted us to be. And so um, it's a great place to raise kids, just a plug for that. Um, it is. Uh, so we're in Texas because we, we, for about a year and a half, maybe we, um, we started hearing these whispers from God, um, about Italy and we really hadn't, um, planned on moving anywhere. You know, we, we have wanted to maybe, you know, do, we just want to do whatever God wants. And if that means you go somewhere else, then we're all for it. Um, you know, but we didn't have a plan of when or where, and we just started hearing these whispers about Italy and it would just, Italy would just, things about Italy would just come into our path, into our family. And we started to question why. And, um, we, so then we started to just, we just started to see God, like, what are you saying? What, What are you saying about Italy? Are we supposed to be you know, looking into something, what do you want to do? What, what is this? You know? And so we started praying about it and getting more and more. And so, um, through, you know, we had a, there was like some dreams that happened and just some confirmations and we decided to just take a trip, Clay and I last December and just go visit and see, you know, if God wants to do something with us in Italy, we're just going to go check it out. And, when we said that we were going to do that, it was like, he just, um, orchestrated even just a way to do that so that we really didn't have to do much. I mean, he orchestrated a way that it was paid for. We didn't, I mean, nobody knew nobody. I mean, we just wanted to go and he just orchestrated everything. And so it was, it was pretty amazing. And so even that was like a confirmation to us that he was saying something. And so we went, there was uh there was some resistance even before we went and so we felt like is the enemy like trying to keep this from happening so that was even (laughs) more confirmation and so uh we went and we got back and we still felt like this is really something we feel like we're supposed to do so uh we told the kids uh we're gonna move to italy you know god god wants us over there for some reason we don't really know why we don't know anybody we don't have any contacts but um, we just know enough that God wants us there. And they were like, yeah, and they were so excited. <laughs> and so they were on board. Um, I was, I was, you know, I was like, this is really cool if this is happening, but I still sort of in my heart, I was like, uh, who, you know, does God ever send you where you want to go? Is that a thing? <laughs> you know? And so um, I was a little leery and it took a while for God to to, to completely confirm it, you know, for me to feel like it was really going to happen. Um, but as soon as I did, you know, I was like, like when I was at prayer storm, I, you know, head on, like, let's do this. We, we, we are going to do this. And so, um, and it's just been a journey this year. We knew that we were supposed to go. We just didn't know when, as soon as we got a date from that, we felt like God was giving us a date. We resigned from our jobs and six weeks later we got here. And then, you know, COVID had uh, a second wave of COVID shut everything down. Mm-hmm. So we are still here waiting. And, I, and, and the cool thing is that you, in the waiting period, you just went right back to teaching the kids, went right mm-hmm. back to making them three meals a day and taking care of them. So they, they still have that nice pattern that they're accustomed to. I yeah. think that was very motherly of you. Very brilliant. <laughs> well, I kind of, um, I didn't grow up, I don't think with much routine or structure. Um, I didn't grow up, you know, in, in a bad situation at all, but there just wasn't, um, there just wasn't a whole lot of routine and structure as far as me realizing it and knowing it. So, yeah. uh, I have realized because clay is very routine and very structured. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have learned how to do that and how to do that with the kids with homeschool and everything and and I kind of crave it and it sort of helps me so um it helps all of us we all just operate a whole lot better with a routine right so we're back we in it. To, <laughs> back in it <laughs> 
Um, what is, in your opinion, the first thing you'd like the kids to see when you actually get them to Italy or experience? What, what is it that you think they should see or be ex experience? You know, I've thought about that several times while we've been here. Like, what are we going to do first? And um, I remember when we went last December, the very first, um, like, my mind was blown experience over there mm -hmm. was when we stepped out of the metro station and the Coliseum was right there. Oh, my gosh. And it's just magnificently gargantuous it's so <laughs> How awesome and and I think it's it's big to it was big to us because we're from Roswell New Mexico <laughs> you know really nothing big there so we only see little green aliens so there. um <laughs> comparatively yeah comparatively it was just this monstrous thing and the fact that it was so ancient you know it yeah. just blew my mind and all I could do is stand there and stare at it and just oh. be in awe of yes. this thing you know and and so I guess uh I'm I'm looking forward to them seeing that definitely excellent excellent yeah. okay I've asked you a thousand questions you're allowed you're encouraged you're <laughs> if you would like to ask me anything I will I, I, I'll be on the hot seat now. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a while. And <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a question that I had in my head. But I was like, oh, I don't know how to put that into the right word. So I'm going to try. Okay. Um, but I would like to know, because you have so much wisdom and grace. And you're so very elegant. And we just love being around you. Aww. But I know that who you are, um, you know, there was, you've just, you've had a lot of experiences in your life and that have formed you and shaped you into who you are now. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of God stuff and just a lot of life. And I would love to know that if you could go back or to whoever's listening, you know, that might, that is like young and they haven't really started the adventure of life yet as far as, you know, leaving their parents home or anything like that, getting married. What would be the best advice that you would give them? If you could like one thing, like maybe just one thing that you could tell them, what would it be? Or maybe I just remembered how I wanted to say it. Mm -hmm. Your very last words to all of us. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Temperance. Temperance is a sweet word for weight. I, I did many things in the spur of the moment, from deciding to go back to college to um, getting married. I did many things in the spur of the moment without praying about it enough, without, without asking God what he would have me do. So there have been repercussions through the years that I had to face and God was kind and good and gracious to me and got me through those repercussions but I would tell any any man or woman any young man woman temperance just even though you you know you want to do a certain thing or you mm -hmm. need to do a certain thing right just spend a little time in prayer about it reevaluating it talking to different people about it before you before you jump that's that's what I would say okay that's good because <laughs> I've always been oh you love me well let's get married and we did you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know things I, I realized that I was always so spur of the moment that it didn't it didn't give me the god time I needed to make good decisions Hmm. so sometimes we grow up from bad decisions we made duh <laughs> us humans we do that that's that's a good point we're human well young lady you have spent some amazing wonderful time with me you've been entertaining and and vulnerable and good and kind with us today i'm so happy that you were here with us today and i'm hoping that as 
you, you know, I've, I, I just boldly invited myself to come to Italy with you. So I'm hoping that the door opens soon because I'm coming to visit. <laughs> oh, we are looking forward to it. And I am <laughs> so honored that you would um, ask us to be with you today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay.